I just chose skilled because I'm boring. <laughs> need to know stuff about stuff? Uh, yeah, I just need to know stuff about things. Like, obviously. Why would you want to know about stuff? <laughs> mm. <clears throat> Alright. Yeah. yeah. But I think uh, we're ready to go. We are alive. Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to uh, another game of uh, Greyhawk Into the Wild This time around, we're going to do most of the introductions. Uh, I think, Griffin, would you be so kind as to read out Ractus's when he posts it in? That oh, okay, sure. Have to, uh, I mean, if it's fine with everybody, he doesn't have to strain his voice. Will do. Um, so we'll give him time to type that up. Um, we're going to start... Uh, with Robert. Got a push to talk. It's. Uh oh. <laughs> nope. Just one moment, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. I can. How about now? Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. All right, we all good then? <laughs> Nothing? Yes, no? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, because <laughs> I have it on push to talk. I've been pressing the same button I always press. Um, uh. Anyway, uh, if you can hear me now, I'm playing uh, Braith. Um, also known as uh, Braith the Butcher. Um, he is a cleric for the domain of corn. Uh, corn, not corn. That's a different thing. That's a band. Um, the <laughs> a band that I don't like. Uh, no, wow. but it's uh, uh, he is the uh, a cleric of cord. I said it right this time. Um, he is honest to a fault and resolute. He just strives for truth and to provide hope in a cruel world. <clears throat> Faith guides his conscience even when in doubt. And he's known as the Butcher. To many, a name he wears with distinction. Nice. Uh, next up we have Justin. My name is Justin. I am playing Hugh, recently earned title of Arrow of Alona. Big deal for him. He has a playing new Hugh uh, friend as well, which is a very large or small cat, depending on the day that you meet him. <laughs> he believes in truth, justice, and uh, equal treatment for all, but doesn't understand any way and how to get there. Yeah. It happens. Uh, next up, we have Pandarin. Yes. Pandarin, I'm playing Barakat, the Eloquence Bard. Flattery is the best way to direct attention away from me, and I like seeing the smiles on people's faces when I perform. Uh, I recently come up with a new EP thanks to the last few episodes of this Greyhawk campaign. I don't know if we can put that on screen somewhere at some point. Uh, my instrument is my most treasured possession, and I'm struggling with my secret identity. Next up, we have Griffin, who's going to do uh, two for one. Uh, him yep, that's right. So. First of all, I'm playing Kicks the Shield, the Battlemaster fighter, Dragonborn. He's cool and calculating individual. He believes heroes stand up against all challenges. Those under my command responsibility come first, but I have an immense ego and delusions of grandeur that people just keep letting me have. Uh, and of course, also with us here is Theta playing Gar the Total Tortle Wizard. Uh, there's nothing he likes more than a good mystery. Uh, self improvement uh, is his game. The goal of life is to study the betterment of oneself. He sold his soul for knowledge and hopes to do great deeds to win it back. Uh, and unlocking an ancient mystery to him is worth the price of civilization. So with all our players and characters introduced, we go into a little bit of. Change. I mean, the episode might have role playing, depending on how long, long this takes. But we are going to set up our, uh, well, not ours, the players. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I sort of manage it a little bit. Uh, the stronghold. So yeah. first of all, we're going to move the players to the stronghold area, which we right here. This is your new base, so your token is there. 
and let's switch over to the stronghold uh, map. Uh, also, thanks to uh, Theta Rectus, who uh, created this lovely map. Yeah, it looks great. Based on the uh, the one, the older one, pretty uh, pretty close to it, actually. Uh, this has happened about forty five days after um, you uh, finished the arena combat. Everybody leveled, so like, everybody wants to give me a short rundown of what your new abilities and powers are. Mostly, most changes are with uh, kicks because he gets uh, a feat at level yeah. six. Uh, if you want me to go first, I'll go ahead and explain. Uh, I have traded out one of my Battlemaster uh, maneuvers for a different one. I've traded out Menacing for Disarming, as I figured that might be more useful going ahead. Uh, I have now a... Uh, I chose a feat. I chose Skilled, and I have now trained in both Investigation, Persuasion, and Perception. I can now talk to people, which is good. I'm going to need to. Uh, and because of our keep, I have a brand new ability, Fighting Surge. Whenever you, uh, uh, whenever I attack using my Action Surge, I can automatically score a critical hit on a successful attack roll. Uh, I can do this for a number of surges equal to our Stronghold level, after which I have to take an Extended Rest. Well, that is that. Um, we'll get more into the Stronghold in a moment. Uh, Hugh. Uh, absolutely. Uh, actually, hitting level 6, Hugh also did receive a feat because he got his 4th level in Ranger. Mm. There was no mo not much of a mechanical change in his companion, but he now does have a greater ability to protect his companion with the Mounted Combatant feat. And if I do ever uh, have to go up front and do some melee, if it's uh, anything that's small, I do a little bit better. And also, I think you got spells on uh, level four. You get a uh, nope. spell? No, no. Okay. No, nope. because Ranger is half caster. Uh, Barricades. Yeah, so I got a couple subclass abilities. So, first of all, my Bardic Inspiration is improved. You can now use it. Uh, and if you fail the roll, you get to keep the inspiration and you can use it again. I've also gained a trait called Universal Speech, which allows me to communicate with other creatures who don't share a language with me, which is a once per short rest ability unless you use a spell slot. Other than that, I've gained a couple new spells, one of them being Shatter for damage purposes since I figured I was a little lacking on that side. And the other is Enemies Abound, uh, if Gar isn't taking that spell. I think Gar's got other things on his yeah. spell book mind here. And, uh... Have you even heard of that spell? Brave. Good spell. Uh huh. <laughs> Yo. Yep. Last week he was too sick to speak. Now his computer's too sick to allow him to uh, say anything. <laughs> Just <laughs> realized. <laughs> like, God damn it. All right. Oh. I guess while while we work on Braith, Gar has become a better necromancer and has a couple of new spells, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Wizards occasionally don't have big fighting level ups. Oh, right, yeah. Six is where you get your next Necromancer ability thing, which I just think means you can control more. I believe it makes them better. Right. Both are good. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. yes okay, I, I do not have push to talk on at the moment because it's starting to annoy me. Um, sure. What I did say was I didn't really get much except more hit points, a couple more casts of my normal spells. And uh, the big thing is a change for Channel Divinity. Uh, mm -hmm. With Channel Divinity, now at 6th level, I can now use it twice between rests. 
And I have a new um, use for it, which is the War God's Blessing. So a uh, creature within 30 feet of you can, uh, makes an attack roll. You can use um, an, a reaction with your channeling to grant that creature a plus 10 bonus on the roll. Um, and this is made uh, after I see the results, but before the DM says whether the attack hits or misses. And that's so that's pretty good. That is pretty good. That is the big thing I got. So, mm -hmm. uh, so we are in the um, stronghold. Uh, Forty-five later. Uh, the couple of things we actually were talking quite a bit about uh, what you were getting. So let me just go directly to the chat to make sure that uh, we uh, covered everything that you're getting. You're getting a level one. Stronghold, which you paid for in a significant amount of money, uh, mm -hmm. you know, five thousand gold. It has a protection against uh, extra planner invasion built in, so that's a thing. Yep, no uh, ski fairies or demons. You have also an extra five hundred gold from that. That was a share you would get from the mine, from the iron mine. Mm -hmm. You have at least one family of farmers. Uh, you have one blacksmith, uh, we also which was have big. a horse master. A horse master? The, uh, the woman who let Webford stay stable. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you should point that as well. Yep. Uh, and uh, stable, stable master. And um, also, you have a, um, a blacksmith, former character Zig Zigzag. And I believe what else? Oh, and you have at least, and you haven't decided what she's going to be, but I'm going to show, uh, show her to the audience nonetheless. Uh, I'm sorry, it was, uh, and and Lee Nibblehand, which is essentially your first uh, follower. Uh, so let me show you to the players. This is her, and all her glory. She is a paladin. I, I classify her as a champion of. Maya mm -hmm. but it depends on what you chose because the closest thing would be a follower that is part of <clears throat> the pal paladin set. I'm perfectly willing to change that because you know the abilities that she has. Um, mm -hmm. Or you can set her up to captain of the guard, which would be a role in the. No, it depends on what you want. She is a essentially the the NPC equivalent of a low level paladin, uh, mm -hmm. level two at most. Uh, there are rules for that in Strongholds and Followers. You get to decide what role she wants. You don't have to decide right away, but uh, once you decide, that will be, you know, what you will be doing. All right. I'll definitely go ahead, put that to the side, and we'll come back to it. You said mm -hmm. she's a follower of uh, Mayahin, you said? Mayahin, yes. Uh, do I know anything about that religion? By yes. Uh, they are a demigod that uh, follows... Rao, I believe. Uh, and R A O or R A U? Right here. Uh, it should be on stream. So it's M L O. Mm -hmm. Okay. What up? Uh, so go to the Goblin Pantheon. Uh, yeah, no, Paylor, not not uh, not uh, main Paylor. P E P E L O R. Paylor, I know who Paylor is. Okay, and uh, basically, she's a goddess, a uh, demi goddess of uh, protection and uh, helping uh, others. They always defer defer to uh, Paylor, uh, Paylorian priest. Uh, in this case, uh, she basically was a, an ascended paladin of Paylor, uh, and so uh, they. They they worked together, right? Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, as a follower, her her abilities would be limited. Let's 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 make the comparison. Let's jump in to see the difference between fo a follower, uh, because you can you do you have different followers. You have units. You have retainers, uh, and of course, uh, then you have artisans. Which is sort of the roles in the keep itself or the stronghold. Yeah. So uh, we have the right now the keep is a is a is a fighters uh, keep. So technically, right. all, all, 
if you wanted to choose a retainer from that, it would be from the following list. Knight Sorcerer, Swordmaster, and or Warlord, uh, if I remember correctly. Like, um, and so they have their own abilities. Um, I think the one that would fit her the best would be Warlord. Uh, describes Warlord as armor class 18, primary ability strength, uh, saves strength and constitution, skills athletics and intim intimidation. She has a signature attack, uh, 1d12 plus 4, piercing damage. Uh, mm -hmm. If she levels up at third level, uh, she has commanding strike. The Warlord makes a signature attack and selects an ally within 30 feet who can see and hear the Warlord and has line of sight on the target of the signature attack. That ally makes a weapon attack and set target. There's really based on the character, you know, of fourth edition. Fifth level charge, a warlord takes a signature attack and selects an ally who can immediately move up to 30 feet. And seven level rallying cry, all allies within 60 feet gain 3d8 temporary hit points. The alternative to that, I think, would be uh, it says here, Knight of the Green Order, as a, as a member of the Pong Group. I believe that'll be. Uh, Knight of the Sun of the uh solar order in this case. Um it has an ability like twisting vines and tangle moonbeam. I would have to change those uh to very fitting for our paladin here. <laughs> yeah. Although we also have a cavalier, uh, and she has she would have as a cavalier uh radiant lance, cavalier lance close with radiant light. The cavalier makes a signature attack and leads to an extra 2d8 radiant damage. Lesser Restoration and <laughs> the ability in several level called Fight Me Knave. If an Agis Handler would be hit by a weapon attack, the Cavalier is hit instead, and then the Cavalier may make a signature attack against an enemy attacker. I think so, the Cavalier fits perfectly. That sounds pretty cool, and uh, I know uh, Hugh will definitely love uh, having a Cavalier companion to ride out with at some point. Now, that's on the retainer side. On the artisan side, on the other hand, if she were to be the captain, Let's look at the description therein. I'll be right back. Uh, the captain is being sold tired, tired of campaigning abroad and watch Commander Six fighting in the Splan in the big city. Any captain used to command might retire the post uh, when they hear tell a new lord lady would keep up tower to defend. Like other artisans, captains sometimes come from local village and send a captain. Uh, the captain shops, the barracks, at which they, they provide. Uh, the first thing your captain does is provide construction of a barracks. Your barracks apparently upgrades experience to a level of some number of units by one. Green units become regular, regular units become seasoned. Your barracks can upgrade a number of units equal to its level. It begins at first level, one unit affected, and can be upgraded up to fifth level, up to five units affected. Units effect affected are chosen at the start of the battle and cannot be changed until the next battle. Um, so, may I ask what page this is on in the uh, book? 86. Okay. Um, I think she would be best suited as Cavalier, mm -hmm. and that is even because of her general experience level that was presented. Mm -hmm. But Captain would be useful. I think Captain is something where we find someone who actually wants the position. Yeah. Did we ask her what she what position she wanted? Does she actually no? Have an actually, uh, Hugh, uh, you talked to her sister, yep. and her sister sort of volunteered her so yeah. so presumably she convinced her to come down and serve here right um i said something will be good for her uh yeah. but you know she is she will be outside of any any you know the the she's a paladin you know and in, in, in pure 5g 5e uh, terms so as uh she would obey her lord which would be kicks and what his designs Unless they contradict directly mm -hmm. uh, her precepts of her of her deity, right? Uh, Which is so super it, shouldn't if it because if it falls under Pelor, as long as we're yeah. not shitty people, we're fine. Yeah, he was also described as a bit adventurous, I think. So there's that, right? Yeah. Uh, so giving them like an active role is something that they would probably yeah. uh, approve of themselves. Also, the difference is that if you have a retainer, they can go with you in adventures. Thank you. Mm -hmm. They are an NPC that goes with you. Uh, lower powered, limited power uh, NPC, certainly. So that's not to, you know, completely uh, rely on them for everything, mm -hmm. but an extra sword nonetheless. Uh, and they would have their own stats, which I would uh, 
have to make a page for that you know, and put those stats yeah, in. Yeah, and then I suppose one of us would take responsibility of the character in play. Exactly. Yeah, my vote is have her be a retainer cavalier. Okay. I don't. I, I don't think. I, think I don't think she fits a captain role. Right. I think we probably do have some options for captain coming up as well. Because if anything, I think that if captain is a position that's filled, Braith could be the captain right off the bat because of his war experience. I mean, technically, I'm already... Uh, I was uh, last ranked as a sergeant. I... Um, let me double-check something on that. Hold on. Okay, uh, yeah. to make it... The captain is a title, yeah. not a rank. I mean, yeah. you could have both. You can have captain... Be the captain of the guard as both a rank and a title. And, mm -hmm. you know, unlike a more strict modern military, you know, ranks back in the day were like, you're the captain now. Yeah, so you'd That's be a sergeant... Right? So you, you so you be Sergeant Brave, Captain of the Guard. Mm -hmm. Sergeant at Arms. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is this is the right of I put the whole thing in. Uh, I don't have I don't know if they are sheets compatible to uh strongholds and followers. I will check. I seen cards, but not for roll twenty. Um so if we if I cannot mm -hmm. find a a, a a a sheet that I can put in the game, then I'll just Put it, you know, put the abilities in, in in a little, you know, in a text description. So every time she comes up, that's part of their text description. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's like an apple. I think that'll work out. It might, it might, it might just be like simply just creating a character sheet for her with the description typed in. Yeah. If you want, we can yeah. just do that. Yeah. So we can All do right, that right so, now. So I'm not hearing a lot of pushback on Cavalier for Elise's character. Let's do Cavalier. It, it definitely fits their persona the most. Yep. So let's um, add a character sheet. I'm also under, uh, just for clarification, Paylor is the sun god, right? Yep. Uh -huh. All right, that's the one I was thinking of. Okay. In fact, we, we can create her as an NPC, so that would actually be easier. Hey, there you uh, go. You know, so we yep. can just slot in the uh, the stats and everything. doesn't have a lot of stats, but she has a plus six. So she would have, yeah. I mean, I would, I would just have the, the spread, you know, and go from there. Mm -hmm. So let's rename her. So what section do we find the uh, the different roles that, like, even we could be placed into? Uh, it depends. Uh, if you if you want to take the roles, uh, that would be under artisans. Okay. Mainly, right? So that's those are the ones that I'm allowing. Listen. Players to fill in if if they don't if you don't recruit an NPC you could fill in one of those you know yeah oh. which makes sense I mean for those who are not uh, already uh, you know uh, like kicks can be one of these roles because kicks will be the lord if if uh, for example uh, Hugh becomes has their own stronghold you know part of the castle which we a, a, a groove. Then you wouldn't be able to fill another role because you would be occupied with dealing with the group. Hundred percent. And that'd be the, and all. And that'd be the yeah. case where then part of it would be switching then to finding someone to fill that role as Hugh. Yeah, is moving up. Um, do you want? Uh, this is actually a legit question. Do you want Braith to actually just serve as captain permanently? We'll, we'll definitely probably end up choosing okay. that, I think. It, it feels like a natural thing that we're going to get to. If that's the case, um, I guess I would ask uh, lessons then. Um, do, is it possible to do that as like a player character, or should that be really relegated to NPC cat status? I, I would leave that entirely up to you, uh, honestly. Uh, it these are roles that I'm allowing players to fulfill in lieu of NPCs. Right. Like, so, if we don't find one, we can assign a player. Yeah. And okay, okay. that, that would be part. If you really want to be yeah. as something, then yeah, you can pick it up. Yeah. That would be your part about, say, oh, we're talking about administrating things. So like, kicks, or what, you know, talk about the armies. Okay. Well, that's your role to, to deal with that. With the armies and stuff like that, the, the forces, right? So that no, so kicks doesn't have to deal with everything. That would be your stuff. So essentially, think of that title as an administrative title, 
not an adventuring one, right? So when you go adventure, you adventure as as yourself, as brave, as a mm -hmm. whatever level character and abilities you have, right? Yeah. Uh, so the two should not come uh, be in conflict. You know, it's, think of it. A lot, a lot of the administrative stuff is just downtime stuff as well. So, you know, when you're doing downtime, back in the stronghold, you know, say so we can have role playing aspects of role playing as well as administration that you can do that. If you don't think that's something that you want to do, that's perfectly fine. We can, you know, work it in into the game that you found somebody to the captain, or maybe you train up somebody as an NPC. You bring them up and and say, well, you know, I was a captain for a little bit, but now we're gonna have this uh nbc do that um, i actually have a crazy idea for somebody to start training as a captain but we'll see about that i don't even know if they would actually go for it and that that's actually uh uh davenport okay yeah J little jim because i doubt he would do it but we gotta like get some like fucking discipline on that boy so he doesn't do stupid things again So he cleans his room too, and Kicks won't have to worry about smells again either. Uh, there's a couple of things uh, to make uh, the differences. The 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 retainers, uh, the expansion starts in page sixty nine. Uh, yeah. And for example, they don't have hit points. Uh, uh, it says uh, health levels. When the party clerics, and this is page 70, okay, uh, when the party clerics ask them how much damage everybody taking, everybody taking a table, looks at the character, you know what to try it, because uh, it keeps explaining it. Retainers do not track hit points, but rather health levels. A retainer has health levels equal to number to their level. Each time a retainer is hit by an attack, they make a constitute saving throw. The DC's average damage from the attack. Uh, they succeed, they take no damage, they fail, they lose one health level per die of damage from attack. Right now, she is level two. Uh, and so she would she would gain levels normally. Essentially, whenever you characters you you take an adventure, I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna give her a separate XP. What I'm gonna do is she levels with you. So if the party gains a level, she would gain a level. Right now she's level two. She hasn't reached level T three yet. I don't want it to just have her be level one. To be too useless. Her stats don't really change much, except that she gains more abilities. That's the only thing that happens, and her health goes up. So again, the example is she gets attacked, uh, uh, a hit on the armor class. She makes a saving throw, a D, uh, DC being the level half the level of damage, I believe, and if she succeeds. Then great. If she doesn't, then you know she loses the health level. So essentially, she has minimal hit points in a way. Um, if that makes any sense. No, I get it. it. It's basically like she's basically not a full like player character, but she's a elevated NPC sort of. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, uh, there's no other, uh, possible recruits for, um, the stronghold yet other than the workers that are there? Uh, not yet. Okay. I'm gonna put two. So then, I, uh, quick question. Um, uh, can anybody technically be considered a retainer? No, you would have to, uh, do it on the followers, uh, table. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, Kicks has to... I, I, I gave that as a starting. Um, yeah. In the way you get retainers is through role-playing, mm -hmm. or you roll on the tables. Okay. Yeah. Right. Do we you have actually... a good handful of retainers right now. I was actually going to ask another question. Like, for that table, then, do we actually have a copy of it? Or is that in the book? It's, it's, in, the it's book. in the book right now. Uh, what page? Just so I can see it. 50-something. 50 50-something? 50 All right. I, 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 I'm just I, holding on 17 right now. I, I learn a lot better when I can actually like read it and look at it myself. I apologize. Oh, oh that's perfect. Entirely perfect. understand. Perfect. Yeah. After looking uh, through the roles, there does there's not one that makes sense for Hugh. Mm -hmm. uh, closest was farmer, but he's he doesn't he's a hunter, not a farmer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we do have a farmer right now, at least. Yep. 
Not, not that we couldn't have one. If oh, I, I see. It's saying like followers, and it's like a list of like zero to three is infantry, uh, level sixteen or seventeen is like a seer or something like that. Whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's like based off of our specific class. I get it. Uh, yeah, in which case would be kicks because he's the one who's the lord of the uh, the. Yeah, because right now I, we got the fighter stronghold. I made an exception for her because of role playing and something that fits better for her, but she would be under paladin. But that's fine, you know. You can always have right. exceptions to the rule, you know. Uh, so I guess you could like keep it marked down, and if Braith makes a temple later on, you just say like, "Yeah," then the paladin comes in. Mm -hmm. Well, so that that answer actually answers my question. So we're basing it all on the fighters list for first for, for yeah. now. For okay. Right now, yeah. Expansion plans are on the way. Sounds like a plan to me. All right. So I believe we have uh, chosen for Nibble Hand. What's next on the table? Um, next on the table is rolling on your units. You end up with three units. Yeah. Uh, so units raised by keep. Uh, you get to roll uh, uh, 1d100 three times i believe it is yeah two plus the level of your keep when you erect it um before we do move into units gar's most recent post may affect numbers Ooh. okay let's see essentially 14 undead constitute as farmer his family and their animals for plus one farmer yeah but no, there are no rules for using undead in the book are they do you have a page for that at this point, I'm pretty sure uh, Gart definitely has a page number. <laughs> now, uh, I have a better question. Will myself or will um, the paladin stand for that? Is the better, you know? He won't, uh, because she's a follower of Paler. Paler is a deity of the sun and the light. And undead one of the things that, yeah, the undead are things that she does not like. The undead have intelligence greater than the ogre that runs his own tavern. <laughs> that is true. Um, I command them, they follow commands. So, Gar, ultimately, you're putting a bunch of your own resources towards specifically running the farm, which makes sense. Uh... And Braith is gonna hate every moment of it. Um, he would see both sides of this and say, if there's any problems, we have two paladins who can easily go clear out the undead. Mm -hmm. Just don't have actual people there. We, like, we can't handcuff our friend just because we don't agree with the way that he, the way that he learns. In my head, I'm thinking, yes, we fucking can, but, uh, <laughs> um... Braith about to be going like, who's the captain of the guard now? <laughs> Next chance he is illegal, but... It's a big but. Property laws exist. Yep. There he is. Don't break his stuff, Braith. <laughs> like, you don't have to go see him. All I'm right, pretty wait. sure R is his own notary at this point. Don't don't test him. I was gonna ask, did you write up a contract for this that nobody signed? <laughs> look, I'll look the other way for now, but I don't like it. I just want to make that very clear. Hey, if there's a problem down the road, we have two people who can deal with it. I don't. Th again, the paladin probably will be much less uh, forgiving than I am on this. Oh, I'm sure. Let's see. So treasury is currently going to be like 2,500. I mean, the thing is that you, um, the, the worst thing that could probably happen, it's not she's going to attack the undead, it's she's going to just leave. Just like, you know, mm -hmm. I I can't be here with with this situation, right? Right. That, that would penultimately be uh, the kicker there. What if we fence them in? <laughs> like a zombie. Privacy fence. 
like like a zombie sort of um border wall what is this absolutely so you just put them in the wall so they can't get it okay some sort of round wall wall filled with exactly blocks. like a <laughs> like a librarian oh boy all right I'll cost AK. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> All right. So units raised by the keep. I believe we're looking at the page 17 of chart, right? Yes. Uh, sure. Let's go ahead and just see what we get then. So uh, first one. You're going to roll all three? Uh, I'll pass it around if people want to roll instead. Seasoned medium infantry. That's not bad. That is a, a very good start. Anything can be built around it. Uh, remember that you have a list uh, that you can... I set up a, a, a page of, of, uh, where you guys you have Stronghold Stand, Stronghold Forces, Followers. Yeah. You want to you start adding those numbers there that by all means. Uh, so you keep track of that on, on the Roll20 page. That would be um, a very good idea. Uh, Bray, um, do you want to roll a deep 100 and see what you get? Yeah, I'll pass it around and do that. You just, you just also have an upkeep, yeah. At least we have a treasury goat for I, five. I rolled a green, five. Green light infantry. Oh, I know who I'm training. Um, Hugh is totally down for a roll. Yo, the only Hugh, condition will be that they will be some sort of odd combination of race that does, that other people would not have gone for. The misfit tribe. Exactly. <laughs> All right, let's see what the Misfit Tribe looks like. 36. Regular medium infantry. We have infantry, infantry, and infantry. No archers, no cavalry. <laughs> it's a start. It makes sense. Oh, yeah. It does. It does. We have all types of infantry. Well, I got the uh, light infantry. You got two uh, medium infantry. So, like, I got the light troops that can move in this forest, I guess. So we got, I'm just going to go ahead and write that down. Cesium, EM infantry, green light infantry again, and regular medium infantry. So I know they got stats somewhere, and that's something we're going to go look up. Uh, but we do have them. That's the start. I think I actually have a way of determining what I, the what the the group that I found was. Okay, what'd you find? Um, nope, wrong spell. I'm gonna. I thought it might be reincarnate, but it's actually resurrection. Oh, the reincarnation squad. Oh, what's the what's the one that has the chart? I'm pretty sure reincarnation has the chart. It's the one that you roll on. The last chance brigade. Effectively. I will find the spell, and it's the one that you roll a d100. And that's what you come back as. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, that's definitely reincarnation. Interesting. Are the retainers? I'm slowly looking for the units. Um, I'm assuming with units, like they are basically a block of stats. Yeah, yeah. they're they're somewhere in here. Uh, do yeah. we know what the make of the units are? The numbers, or is that all? No, those th 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 those are abstracted. You know, those are abstracted. So that actually doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The, these are three figurines, and they'll have their stats. I'll be honest with you, in my head, I'm thinking to myself, how many men am I training? 20, 30, 70? Oh, there are rules for size. So. There we go. Okay, so uh, in starting in page uh, 236, it starts describing oh. the different aspects of it. Okay, uh, there you go. There so, for example, there's a list of things like cavalry, flying, fortification, seize engines, infantry. 
the infantry, the meat, possibly literally depending on who you're fi fighting, of potatoes or your army. Very limited in whom they oh. can attack. Unit oh. infantry table on page 237. So awesome. I'm going to go with one more than the 60 because the 89 just got humans. Mm -hmm. Only it's... because 60. God forbid we get humans. Ah, yeah. uh, the, Q, Q wouldn't evil come back humans. with humans. Q is more fun. Instead of going with half work, which 60 is, and making Braith never be able to sleep, um, it is oh. Lightfoot Halflings. Well, let's say that uh, because those these rules are where you're creating your own units. Mm -hmm. These are the units that came in pre package. So yeah. if you're buying new units, Basically, there are going to be all humans. Because they're oh, the most okay. popular. So, yeah. okay, if you're creating okay. new units, when you you know pay gold or to That's role playing, you you hire someone or have an ally. Because there's ways to get yeah. it. You can add ally units, essentially people who place themselves to help you. Uh, and you get that from talking to ambassadors and stuff like that. Uh, and um, also, uh, you can pay gold to mm -hmm. create your own units. In that case, I would have you either... Uh, you get to choose your ancestry and stuff like that. Cool. Uh, so, um, so on that note, this is just for the future then. Where mm -hmm. is the closest prison to where we are? Uh, that would be Greyhawk, basically. Cool. Yeah, they got to be shipped all the way out there. Yeah. He wants to help people. He's going to help change people's lives. They just may be criminals when, when he first finds them. In fact, it would be all the way to Diamond Lake. So uh, that would... Uh... Gar would know what where where that is because he's visited. Cool. That's east of Greyhawk. Basically, what they are prisoners are are fined. You know, you either you get a fine, you put to hard labor, or you get executed. Basically, those are the three ways that they deal with. Yeah, uh, mi medieval crime and punishment is like, all right, we're gonna cut your hand now. Get back to work. Go away. <laughs> yeah, no. For a few sounds no. about right. He will be going to orphanages and prisons to, to try and change people's lives. Orphanages? Yes. F fuck kids. Do you, you want to go to orphans, Braith? No, I'm just thinking to myself. <laughs> Don't hey, kid. hey kids, you want to go to war? Too bad. You're being conscripted, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, Not so forcibly. He, he'll, I'll offer and then explain the benefits. <laughs> this is so Oh god. All right, All right, go ahead. So as far as like uh these unit stat blocks, uh we will have to make them by hand. I don't believe that they uh exist like a la carte, like we can't just pull up a card for these right now. We'll have to yeah. make some stats. Uh yeah. and as Theta says right here in our chat, a unit must be paid a tenth of its cost each season. That's probably gonna be in the tens of gold, because I think they cost the hundreds of gold ultimately. Yes. From when we oh. were talking. So once we figure out their specifics, we'll know how much they each individually cost, figure out their income, yeah. and then we'll figure out how much we're paying them. The tables that you're seeing, you can use them also to figure out the cost, which is important. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. Uh, and so that and people they're, and, and all start, they all start. They all start at size one d four because these are the first levies. Again, oh, you can so pay more money. They are all small. Okay. You know, to increase their size. Uh, to get them better equipment, better training, you can all do all that. Actually, cheaper the when they're smaller. I I think like standard is like times one for their price here, uh, but we'll go over that later. That's fine. Uh, uh, and I guess bit, so the, the, the calculus is it's slightly complicated as well. So yeah, we'll 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 have to work it out. A dwarven heavy infantry, for example, would have an upkeep of forty four gold a season. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and just so everyone is kind of aware. Uh, between green, regular, season, light, and medium. Green are obviously uh, with any training, but have seen no action. Regular units are uh, volunteers who have been trained and uh, have a season commander uh, and can begin as regular typicals in an army. And seasons have seen more than one battle and live to tell the tale. So we have one group of people who've already fought. Uh, light means that they have leather or no armor, and medium means they have hide or a chain shirt. So our medium Good. infantry who has seen battles and lived through it, well, they're they're wearing the armor. I mean, basically, you have people here who have been living in the front lines of the Pomarge, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, with the Pomarge for 
for generation for at least a generation or so. So they are experiencing at least as skirmishers and and occasional, yeah. you know, fighting of raiders and that sort of thing. So yeah, they 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 know. Uh so that's where the experience comes from. Not necessarily that they're frontline, you know, right. active Just that service. They fight. Yeah, they know how to fight. Um, do we have like a, a card that we could put this all in, all the information? Uh we do. Stronghold forces. In the images at the at the end. Let's see real quick. Yeah, there is a I actually don't here. see that. See it's that on card. page two sixty seven. No, no, no. I mean like uh on like roll twenty. Do we have like, no I like I said earlier, uh I haven't found any specific cards for supporting this, this product. They might be. Okay, okay. Uh, but uh, I will yeah. make a search because I didn't know exactly what you guys were going to do and how you're going to do it. So I, I waited until we started. It's better to have the units and then try to fill in cards and just have a bunch of stuff you might never use. At least uh, in my experience. So, uh, so then I'll just write it out in the hirelings and followers section for now and we can just move it later. Uh, we got green light infantry. We got. Uh, you actually have stronghold forces uh, yeah. as a card as well, so yeah, uh, we can put it there as well with the scriptures. What's the third one? Uh, you have available to you player notes, general followers, stronghold stats, stronghold forces, and of course XP and treasure tracker. No, no, I know that. I'm talking about the actual infantry units. Season medium infantry, ah. green light infantry, regular medium infantry. Thank you. And I've put it up there already, too. So there we go. Three of us, like, each taking a different infantry and creating it, I guess, is the question. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah communal. A communal thing. I mean, people stream in, and you, you know, you, you are who are expert in, in, in troop, with troops, you sort of you know, okay, this person has experience. Basically, you set up a table, they come in, it's like, I like to sign up, and it's like, okay, you know, and, and you go from there. Uh, and different characters can then provide different tests if you if that's what you're, you're into it. Yeah. So. Roger. Um, well, with permission from uh, Baron Kicks, I'll take the green infantry and uh, shape them. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to go to Stronghold Forces, and I'm just going to go ahead and say uh, Braith has command of those. Uh, Hugh, you'd like the regular medium infantry? Oh, yeah. Okay, and I'll just handle the seasoned medium then. Uh, I gotta ask, does Barakat or Gar want in on any of this? Yeah, I, I think Gar has his own plans, right? No, yeah, I thought so. You you know you have your own plans and I like your plans, so keep doing them. And uh Barricat? I'm not really sure. I'm not exactly suited to uh training stuff. Uh, perfectly fine. My character has zero military experience. We have a lot of other things you can do. <laughs> yeah, I I figure there's something that I can do that's better. Mm -hmm. Say join the green light infantry. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. the way that Hugh got his position was he was walking around trying to help people but wasn't really ca capable of any sort of help other than this. Mm. <laughs> like, tried to help the dwarves, not strong enough. Tried to help make stuff, didn't know how to make stuff. He's just like, uh, I can... I can tell people where to go. Hugh, I've seen you fight on the back of a spider. It can't be any less difficult than a horse. Why would I use a horse? I have a cat. Exactly. If you can ride a cat, you could ride a horse. I'm not riding a horse. Well, neither are they. You're teaching them to fight. Get out there. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> neither are they. Uh, they learn to... They, they learn a lot of shin hits as well as going for joints. Why are we fighting like we're three feet shorter? Well, let's look at the commander. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. So we'll work on those stat blocks independently and get them 
back into play as soon as quick possible. Um, when I see the seasoned people's stat blocks, I will then adjust yeah. it to make the regular. Um, also, I guess of no of note, mm -hmm. uh, these people have ancestry. Are all of these units human? They are. Uh, these ones will be human. Okay, because there's also dwarf and elf and gnome on the list. Halfling is oddly missing, unfortunately. But oh well, I guess halflings don't all go to war. Mm -hmm. Just one at a time. Yeah. Yeah, that is that seems like a big oversight, actually. I agree. Need we need our halflings to get thrown by the tree ants into the end zone. I mean <clears throat> enemy exactly. field. Exactly. <laughs> Look, if you're not throwing a halfling downfield and then making two go for it's into the end zone, are you even playing the game? <laughs> you're playing Blood Bowl. <laughs> uh Blood Bowl Blood Bowl is fun. <laughs> Uh, at any rate, though, so we got uh, our units, we have our halfling follower, I think we got a couple more NPCs on this list. Are these people we should worry about right now? Well, uh, those are going to go to the next step, which is the ambassadors. Yeah. And this is gonna... Those, then. And uh, you are gonna do a little... And this is where we get to roleplay. Because it's not yeah. simply a matter of... Mm -hmm. Them showing up like, yeah, you know, we're, I mean, you could do it that way, but that's boring and we're not going to do it that way. So uh, we're going to do it uh, through role playing. And some of these individuals are people who you have met uh, before well, or people or related to people you met before. So there's that. And what is it that I cannot, uh, I can't find it because I didn't save it. I'm a oh, that's, that's not good. Yeah, a, don't worry about it. It's uh, it's a thing. But let's go. Uh, while we're talking about, it, let's jump to the ambas ambassadors uh, section. And the ambassador section is on page um, ninety six. Uh, rulers of some nearby cultures know about you and your new stronghold de domain. I uh, almost well, a decimate, but it's not that way. Domain, and they want an alliance that, of course, may take some time and negotiation. So, in the meantime, you, you they sent an ambassador. Ambassador allowed you to purchase units from the ancestry as though they were friendly. It's the ancestry and out, uh, attitude. And you ever award units you didn't buy by rolling a follower chart and you keep, then the new units can be from the ambassador's ancestry if you wish. Now, I didn't allow that because you haven't had the role playing with ambassadors in the keep, right? You made original, uh, you know, first contact in Greyhawk. But you know, it take, as the rule says, it takes a while for them to to uh, do that. Ambassadors are not only of another species, but another government. An orc ambassador, you know, said these are rewards, not enemy spies. Uh, very important for me, basically for the GM. These are rewards, not enemy spies. But you know, uh, that we know about. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, let's give you a rundown of the. Um, hmm. Let's meet our new friends. Um, let's talk to them as I do another stuff, try to multitask here and fail horribly. Uh, okay, so I'm saving that and I'll put it up in the first place. So who shows up? Uh, during the days and weeks that you establish yourself, a couple of people show up. Uh, among them, uh, one uh, uh, Garen Ironstripe. So let's start with him. Let me show you this way. He is basically the person that uh, grueling Ironheart, uh, you, the dwarf that you met that was an ambassador to Ulek, to the Ulek states, uh, and Greyhawk. And he said he would send some, he would send the surveyors and eventually he would send a representative. And this representative is, is Garen Ironstripe. Uh, he shows up. He definitely shows up with a few merchants. In fact, he parts of a sort of a merchant caravan. And he brings ale and he brings a couple of things. And he, you know, gets off of the, uh, the, uh, the donkey that he's riding. He's like, right? Oh. Well, then. Well, this place looks fine, I guess. Um, 
Uh, where is the uh, local lord here? Um, that would be one. me. Oh, pleasure to meet you there. Oh, right then. He kind of bows. I'll, I'll let you uh, let you take a look at the handiwork here before we got started. Yeah, it's like ah, right. And he sort of walks around, and he's there's still some dwarven. Um, um, yeah, there's like someone yeah. working on the crenellations yeah. somewhere. They, they're finishing up the final final touches uh, because they're, you're fixing. This was a fixer up or not uh, built from the ground up entirely. Mm -hmm. Like right, right, right. It's like mm -hmm. cool. see what they did there. It's like look how my whole thing. So, hmm. After a while, it takes about 20, 15, 20 minutes to go around the the place. He turns like that. Ah, yeah, we have a mighty little beginnings here. Saya. Um, ah, thank you. And, um, you know, on behalf of New York States, I'm here to, uh, well, see what's happening and see what we can do to help. Well, so far, your uh, compatriots have done a good job. We have, uh, everything seems to be sturdy and in shape, but of course, uh, I, I bow to your advice. Oh, I mean, I don't want to be insulting or anything, but, uh, that only can do what you have available. This was human construction first. And so, well, humans know how to build things that are livable, right? Mm -hmm. uh, very few of them have the experience and the years of a dwarf with a true fortress. Uh, a dwarf, dwarf fortress, if you will. Um, <laughs> so it'll do. Against orcs and the likes, I'm sure it'll do, unless you have to uh, deal with a very large army. Which case, well, that's going to be a problem. Hopefully, that yeah, won't one happen. Way or another, that would be. Yeah, but this site, it's a good place to uh, send out patrols and the like. Um, hmm. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I like it very much. Right. Of course, one of the things on my mind would be, uh, of course, the underground section, which I think you probably have far more experience than uh, some of our other. Uh, masons who were here before. Oh, well, let's get a look at that, too. Uh, I'm sure it's still very sturdy, but, uh, of course, if the orcs ever did send an army, sapping would probably be the first and easiest way to get in. Getting good counter sappers is the best way to deal with that. Mm -hmm. uh, good diggers. You need good diggers for that. Mm. And so I'm basically giving him the tour of the place and continuing to talk. And it, it seems he, like he's sad. he's he, in good spirits. He frowns a little bit when he sees all the magical circles and whatnot. Yeah. And he's like, he's like eh, it's not. And, it, it, you know, he, he doesn't like that at all. He likes a, you know, good, uh, godly uh, um, You know, uh, construction, but this is clearly no church or temple. Mm -hmm. He knows that much. So he's not that comfortable with that, but he doesn't say much of anything, but it's clear he's, he doesn't, he doesn't hide his, this, his, uh, his, uh, discontent too well. Um, so, but overall, it's like, well, this, if you're going to use it as a refuge, and a siege, a good place to pull out of food, water, that sort of thing. Yeah, extra weapons. I yes. can see that working. A you might want to semi natural cavern over in that direction probably would make for cool storage at the very least. Oh, right, right. Uh, you might even, if we have enough time, might be able to build a escape tunnel or two. Because mm -hmm. uh, let's be honest, uh, sometimes things can go wrong, and you can only hold for hold, hold on for so long. So, you know, I would not encourage people to run in the first opportunity, of course. That would make for a waste for this place. But uh, on the other hand, if you got to do it, might do it right. Of course. We're going to be the shield of uh, this of this region. Mm -hmm. uh, but speaking of, uh, perhaps we should find you a place to bed down for now. You'll be staying here for an extended time. I'm not sure. Did we actually make a guest quarters here? I haven't explored that much. I think the yeah. over here in the keep will probably do. Yeah, over here. 
Uh, this is this this is the main keep area here where they have the beds and all that. Uh, it had a, a chimney and the like, so it was well appointed, right? Yeah. I had some furs and the like, uh, you know, the the uh, the old rubber baron that was here before. Yeah. He he liked to live well, you know. Yeah, with a, I I do like just as a point of humor, the iron cage was so big and ponderous, nobody bothered trying trying to move it. It's just a permanent fixture on the wall. <laughs> Well, it's a gazebo originally. Oh, it's, that was oh, it's a gazebo. Yeah, yeah so they, they they turn into a cage for the what uh, was it the owl bear. So now they just basically taking all the metal and wood construction that they put into keep it uh, keeping it. But it's mm -hmm. it's a gazebo, right? Yeah, it probably was originally from the original keep when the build is the original keep. I mean, uh, let me go through what the old building was like. This area right here where the uh, main uh, this is this was uh where the tents were, so now probably yeah. it's in a storage area. Yeah, storage, uh, maybe like a small stable or something. These two would be barracks. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is also storage because you found old things here, like barrels and the like. And the residence would be between these two buildings, uh, this one and this one. You get to decide which is which. Right? I mean, you remodeled, so if you want to put a label that says residence barracks once you label them you know that should be uh, a thing right and actually he makes he makes some suggestions as well right um uh, he also makes a suggestion that many of these roofs are in wood and eventually you want to switch that over to stone maybe have an inner keep and in a tower uh that oh, looks yes. over the wall so that gives you a uh, good reach right because right now these buildings are not that tall. They're about the, the, the walls. They raise the walls all the way to about 30 plus feet, which is good. Not great, but good. Uh, they'll keep most, you know, most human-sized targets away unless they use ladders or some other sea engines. But uh, you would have to raise the walls even higher. And he suggests that in the future, when the funds are available, you may want you to build an actual inner dungeon Dungeon, mm -hmm. uh, which will also be as an inner keep as well, but that you know, takes more resources. 